everyone, I'm Mrs. Navins from the Smithtown Library and this is Outdoor Art. Today I'm going to show you four simple and fun ways to bring art outdoors. First we're going to start with our spray chalk exercise. For this project you're going to need an empty spray bottle, some more warm water, you're going to need baking soda and cornstarch. You're going to mix it together and you're going to put it in a little cup. And then if you um, have a funnel or anything just to put it in the spray bottle you'll need that and then we're gonna need some food dye. So it's very simple. First, you're gonna unscrew your spray bottle. And with your cornstarch and baking soda mix, you're only gonna fill the bottle about one third of the way. So I'm gonna put my funnel in and put the mixture in. Okay. And if it gets a little messy, that's fine. Everything will definitely come right out. You know, I'm better off probably doing it this way. Okay. Ooh. Okay, so once you fill it up, you can dust it off. That's totally fine. That's why we're outside. We're getting messy. Then you're just going to fill it up with water. You're going to leave a little room at the top. And then you're going to pick your watercolor or your um, or your food coloring. I'm going to do about 15 drops. I'm going to do green. And the good thing is if you have more than one spray bottle at home or if you have even like an empty ketchup bottle or like a barbecue sauce, anything with like a squirty top, you can rinse it out, clean it, and then you can use it for this activity as well. So you can have a bunch of different colors when you want to decorate with your spray chalk. Okay, so I'm going to... Give it a nice shake, clean it up a little bit, and this is going to last a while because it's a full bottle um, and you really don't need a lot. Um, you can use it on your pavement and you could probably use it on paper as well if you wanted to take a piece of construction paper and do an art project that way. But then if we go over here, you can kind of see it squirts, you can make a flower. It dries pretty quickly and then at the end you'll be able to see the, the green that's on the pavement and if you did red or purple it will definitely show up and it's just a fun way to bring art outdoors. Okay so for our next outdoor art activity we're going to be making chalk pots. For this activity you're going to need four plastic cups, four plastic spoons, plaster of Paris. You can get it at your local Michaels, Joann's, Walmart. If not, you can always reach out to me at the library. I'd be happy to share my stock right here. We need four different colors of tempered paint and a baking mold. So I picked four colors just because my baking mold has four different cups that we're going to do. So, and you're also going to need water. So you're going to do each cup is going to be filled with one third cup of water. And then you're going to be mixing two tablespoons of tempera paint in with your water. I already did two of mine. I did a green and a yellow so far. So next, I have my water already in here. And we're going to take our tempera paint. And we're going to do two tablespoons and add it to the water. And then your spoons are here because we're going to mix it up. Just gonna stir, mix everything together. Make sure the water is pretty cold. Um, we're gonna need nice cold water to mix with our tempera paint. And then now I'm gonna do a blue. It's gonna be blue and orange. Okay. And you can always add more paint if you want it to be like a darker color. You can always mix colors really whatever you'd like to see um, your chalk look like. Okay. I'll mix that. So once our paints are all mixed with the water, it's time to use the Plaster of Paris. You're going to take your Plaster of Paris and each cup is going to get two thirds cup of Plaster of Paris. So I only had a, a third cup of a measuring cup, so I'm gonna pour 
two of these into each and then you're going to stir right away. Stir it in. It's going to really start hardening up fast. And then I'm going to pour it into my baking mold. Like, um, like a cookie dough, the consistency of like cake batter. And then if you see you don't like how uh, the color looks, again, you can always add more paint. two minutes and then we're going to add our craft sticks. So I finished making the rest of the chalk molds. These ones are starting to harden up the green and the yellow so I cut craft sticks in half and I stuck them right in. Now I'm going to do that with the blue and the orange. Stick it as deep as you can and you're really, this is all complete now so you're going to keep it in the sun for about an hour and we'll come test it and peel them out when they're ready. Okay, so our chalk pops have been sitting for a little bit over an hour in the sun. So you're going to take your pops. They should come right out of the mold. And then you're ready to start making art on a sidewalk or a driveway. And then they're easy to make if you want to make more colors. Okay, so our next activity is going to be a tree bark rubbing craft. You're going to need some printer paper or construction paper some crayons that you peel off um, the labels. And if you do have some stencils and markers, you can definitely add um, some different patterns or designs to your rubbing after you have completed it. Okay, so I have my piece of paper and I took a few colors of uh, crayons and I found this lovely tree that we're gonna use today for our tree rubbing exercise. So all you really do, you decide if you want to have um, your rubbings vertical or horizontal. So you're gonna hold up your paper wrap it around the tree. You might not have to wrap it if you have like a bigger tree at home, um, but this one's pretty small. So you're just gonna hold it like this. And then you're really just gonna take your crayon up and down, really however light or dark or hard you want it to go. So I'm gonna do purple in the middle. And then you can rotate and do a different color. You can move to different trees or different spots in your neighborhood or backyard. So if you get the idea, you can definitely see all the creases in the tree. And then also, I have this leaf. If you have leaves or branches, twigs at home, you can use anything that's outside in nature. I'm gonna show you what a leaf would look like. I'm gonna hold it up against the tree. So you just see the different patterns that the leaf gives you. Definitely a fun, cool idea. And then again, if you do have stencils um, and markers at home, you can definitely stencil over this and frame it and make it something fun that you can keep at home. Okay, so our next activity is water squirter art. For this, you're gonna need some pool toys, some water squirters. If you don't have those at home, you could always use anything with a squirt top, like a rinsed out barbecue sauce bottle or a ketchup bottle. Um, as long as it's clean and able to fill with paints or watercolors, you should be good. And then any kind of paper, it can be small, big. And then you can also use some painter's tape if you wanted to make some designs. You can put them on here so then the uh, watercolor won't hit it and then it will show up later in your art. So I went ahead and filled my water squirters with some watercolor. If you don't have watercolor, you can always water down different kinds of paints. I would definitely stick with acrylic just because it's gonna stay a little bit better on the paper. So next, you're just gonna take your water squirters and you're gonna line up a little bit far away. Again, you can change the distance, the height, anything you'd like, and you're just gonna aim for your paper and let it drip down. It will take a while to dry. But the dripping process is really going to uh, make it look really cool. 
And again, you can do this, you can clean out your squirters, you can do different colors. You can have um, the painter's tape on there to do different designs. But again, this is a fun and simple way to bring art outdoors. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you in our building soon. But until then, please visit the library's website at www.smithlib.org for more programs and resources. See you soon. Thank you.